Hello. Today we are playing Breath of the Wild on the Ring Click controller. Do you think today we could beat this game? I have some ideas. Um, I think what's going to make it easier is we definitely don't have to BTB because we can BLSS to castle now. If you had to guess to me how long this is going to take me to complete Plateau, probably like two hours. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is a game that makes me keep coming back for more. I originally bought it for the Wii U and remember many sleepless nights staring at the TV in my first apartment. The music, shrines, and characters made me feel like I was in a world of my own. In honor of the game that has brought me so much joy, I decided I was going to beat Breath of the Wild, but this time on the Ring Fit controller. In one night. So, I booted up the game, ready to experience the things that brought me joy so long ago. A new world, scary but exciting. There were only a few rules I kept for myself. I was limited to 1. Only using the ring con. 2. I could not gain any hearts or stamina. 3. I had to be naked. 4. I could not complete the Divine Beasts, and I could not stop streaming until I beat the game. I know you're all wondering, how is this possible? Well, a controller modder named SuperLuis64 created a mod that allows you to use the Ring Fit controller for all game inputs. And the Ring Fit has a few quirks that create extremely immersive gameplay. To use any of the buttons on the controller, I needed to constantly be running or at a light jog. Also, most of the menuing obeys the controller lock rule of needing to be constantly moving. Did I mention I haven't beat Ganon since 2017? This was going to be a long night. Timer start. Oh, I have him take down. <laughs> How long does it take me regularly to do the plateau? Like 20 minutes? Ah, the great plateau, where it all begins. Starting now, we follow the journey of our hero Link on his way to rescue Princess Zelda from her castle. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you all know, but there might be something that you don't. This is where we would normally do our first speedrunning glitch, the Shrine of Resurrection clip or SOR for short. This is a glitch that you can perform to one, pause time at 5.15 for the rest of your run, and two, have optimal weather conditions for the entirety of the run. Confused? Don't worry, big speedrunner sister Barry Crape is here to help. Basically, we need to do this skip because it sets the time at 5.15, um, so if we don't do it, we're gonna get in trouble. After numerous attempts, I found the problem. The Ring Fit controller does not have the correct mapping to perform the clip. Without the throw mechanic, this trick was simply impossible. Did I give up? Yes. Did I waste 16 minutes of everyone's time? Absolutely. Uh, it was supposed to be faster, but I guess we're just gonna go out. You know, whatever. We're, we're not picking any of this up, we're not babies. The rest of the plateau was pretty standard. I'm a puppy. Without the throw mechanic or aiming through the Sheikah Slate, I knew I wasn't going to be able to set League's angle and I wasn't going to be able to clip into the shrines. There was only one option, the casual way. Zooming around the plateau, I managed to pick up Magnesis, bum, 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 bands, took some Bacobas for all they were worth. Come here, let me teach you a lesson. Stasis, Barbie dress up adventure, and finally, the standard pickup of the paraglider. After not knowing how to skip the Fast and the Furious of cutscenes, one hour and 25 minutes was my final time on the plateau. Now, we can try to do VLSS. Do you think I could do it? There's no way. There's no way. If we do VLSS, I'm a legend. I'm actually a legend. B-L-S-S. Fairy loves stupid shower, shower who? 
Board of Context, BOSS, or also known as Blessed by the Lazy, is a new speedrunning trick that makes it so you can fly across Hyrule with less inputs than the typical wind bomb. Or Boomy Zoomy for the Smanthers. Forever later, it finally hit me that the leg tracking does not always pick up your movement. So, you can only go so far with this method. I had the setup consistent, but the distance seemed to cap. So, you know what that means. For the rest of my run, I can only do just that. Run. No wind bombs, no BTBs, and no BLSS. Do you feel sorry for my legs yet? No time for pity. I already knew the next objective. Well, the pain finally started to set in. You can see the spark in my eye actually starting to fade from existence. My feet already began to hurt and thoughts of putting on Heelys began to cross my mind. Also, this was the start of my apple cider saga. He will follow us for the rest of the run, so please do not forget about him. After what felt like hours of running, we made it through the Lost Woods and to the final boss, a sword in a rock. For this glitch, I decided to pull out the master sword from the slab with only three hearts. To perform it, I set up a campfire right next to the sword. Just make sure that Link has access to both the sick command, we, and the pulley command, we. I then sat down until morning. Once he started to wake up, spamming A and looking to the left was the best that I could do in hopes of getting the master sword the gooby way. I did it! I did it! First try! And what do you know? It worked. This made me bring out the big boy in celebration. Let me sit down for a second, eat a couple more strawberries, and let's think of what we can do to make the boss fight easier. Okay? Oh, we're gonna farm arrows. Okay. After all this running and hard work, Link definitely deserved a good meal to save the world. All these was next on my list. Side note, do you think Link cuts the crust off of his sandwich? Comment below and let me know. Since I only had three hearts for the entirety of the run, making attack food and health up would really aid me in the later boss fights. So I did another marathon to the jungle. The map is a lot bigger than you think it would be when you start having to run across the whole thing in real life. The Chubrub was beginning to spawn at this point. We needed to get as many Mighty Bananas as possible to make sure the three times attack buff would be present during the Blights and during Ganon. Triples and Durians were also utilized to help with the extra hearts that would instantly heal me from any damage I received during the boss fights. The rain could not stop these games. We then would finish our hunt. And Faroon. Around this part of the ring con percent, I started to get a little nervous. As mentioned before, I haven't beat the game in four years. Could I really finish this ambitious challenge? Getting to the castle was really intimidating because I was unsure of where I would land since I would not be doing the standard BTV in any percent. However, I was at the end of the routing so I had to work backwards to get all the weapons that I needed. After sneak attacking the big boy, I went to the secret location of the dragon scale. This item extends the duration of all effects you use while cooking. Bombing the wall brought me ancient arrows and killing the Lizardo boosted my ego. Now, it was time to cook. Like your grandparents used to, I shot the campfire with a flaming arrow. You know, just like grandpappy. Using all the ingredients we gathered, I ended up with enough food to hopefully carry me through the fight with all the Blights and Ganon. After, we routed for more swords, a bow, and finally made it to our destination. Ganon. Wait, this isn't right. I'm in the wrong room. Okay, we have to... We have to go the other way. <laughs> we can't do the skip from this direction. Now that we figured things out the hard way, welcome to my never-ending nightmare. What did we do already? We got the banana. What did we do after that? We got the durian. What did we do? Pick up the stuff in the castle. Now what's left? We just have to win. Then we're done. And we completed a ring fit run. We just have to win. It's that easy!
Yes, you read that right. 11 hours were spent on the final bosses. 11 hours I could never get back. Countless people getting through college, getting married, having kids, sending them through college, and retiring in the time it would take me to complete the game. 11 hours. In order to beat the game, I needed to complete seven stages of boss fights in a row without dying. Once Link KOs, you have to start all the way over from the beginning again. Out of all the challenge runs I've ever done, including beating Dark Souls on a dance pad, and even the Ring Fit controller, this was the hardest and most frustrating of them all. What has happened to me? What has happened to me? My body was so sore from the six hours of running before this, making the fight even more agonizing to complete. Like I said before, I only had three hearts, no armor, terrible bow aiming, no divine beast completions, and a whole lot of running. To make the battle of endurance a little bit easier, I would be starting off every boss fight with the Windblade skip. This is a speed running tactic to kill one of the bosses during its opening cutscene. To set it up, we had to angle Link on the wall, slash, and then jump around a little bit to find a spot where he would shoot his bow. After aiming at a very, very specific and small, teeny weeny little portion next to the broken pillar, you pause the game. This was where I would take a breather to calm my nerves each run. Eating the longest duration of the damage boost food, you can finally shoot the arrow that will explode the wind blight during his cutscene. Just make sure that you do not skip the second cutscene. This would happen a lot. Part one of eight stages finally complete. Water Blight is next on our list to be written in the Death Note. The strat here is actually pretty simple. You have to let him whiff his spear attack and you can go in on the Whirly Twirly to start phase two. Once he transforms, try to get as many crits as you can with the bow. However, RNG is going to complicate things a little bit. I was not very good at shooting him because he would constantly land on top of the balcony, making it impossible to get extra damage. But sometimes I would get a perfect run that consisted of no damage loss and only using four arrows. I only brought one good bow with me from the castle routing, so it was going to be difficult to keep his durability in every shot would count. Out of all the bosses, Fireblight felt like his hitboxes were a little bit on the goofy side. I tried my best to start this fight with one extra heart because he deals three points of damage with every swing. The opener here really seems to determine the smoothness of the rest of the fight. If you get the Wuxi, it's safe to say you are going to get hit if you go in. The hitbox is a little funky and does a crazy amount of damage. However, the front slam is exactly what you want and is super easy to go in on. Phase two of this fight just requires him to mega suck a bomb and get bopped a few times. I always try to switch to the Master Sword for the next mini boss who will forever haunt my dreams. This stupid, wacky, little goofy, silly guy is an absolute run killer. Thunder Blight will and will not hesitate to one shot you every time you go in his personal bubble. The worst part of losing your run here which was many, many times across the 11 hours, is that you have to start all the way from the beginning and do Wind Blight Skip again. This beast of a boss is everything you do not want to fight on a Ring Fit controller. Fast, hard to track, and a big zoomy boy. The best strat I could find was to block his first phase with a shield, then wham all my frustrations out on him. However, for phase two, we had to try a completely different strat. Lifting up the electrocuted pillar to stun him, then running in was the most consistent way I found to beat Thunderblight. The hardest part was to make sure I hit him right when he went in because the shield cannot block both of his attacks. However, the hardest part 
is about to begin. Fighting Ganon. The moment we've all been waiting for. I wanted to keep this fight canon and avoid stun locking him like most of the speedruns do. This was going to be E-Girl versus G-Boy, survival of the fittest. One master sword and two shields was all that I had. Unfortunately, I did not bring enough bows to really complete the fight with arrows. Not only would it always break, but I was horrible at aiming. The run had to finish here. My feet were covered in blisters and 17 hours of wear and tear were destroying my contact lenses. Also, I don't have insurance, so I can't get any more. My socks even started to smell like popcorn. Gross, I know. To beat the fight, I had to rely on hitting every perfect parry I could due to only having two usable shields. The more food I had saved up, the better, as Ganon would one-shot me with the two yellow hearts in the top left. This fight was probably the longest I haven't talked in a long time. Normally, I am a certified yapper, but my focus was solely on Ganon. Getting him off the wall became a hassle due to having the aim off my leg rather than the Joy-Con. But phase two was where I would feel the nerves starting to kick in. Having missed every wall laser before this, hitting one would secure my success. And then... I don't know if I want to try it. Can I run? Let's see. Kind of not. steps, 17 long hours, and one big old jug of apple cider later, I did it. I beat Breath of the Wild on the Ring Fit controller in one night. I wanted to appreciate a game that gave me endless amounts of entertainment four years ago. Although the world record is 25 minutes, my 17 hour any percent run made me feel proud of myself. I'd like to give a massive Massive thank you to the Breath of the Wild speedrunning community who helped me train for this insane challenge. And to everyone in chat who stuck by for the longest run I have ever completed on my channel. Also, shout out to Super Louis 64 who created the Zelda Ring Fit mod and made the run possible. And to the people who are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and checking out my Twitch stream. If you made it to the end of the video, never be afraid to try things that you see as impossible. Never doubt yourself and never give up. Okay! Don't mention that! <laughs> I don't know how to ride a horse on the controls! Do not mention that! Do not mention that! I do not know how to ride a horse! <laughs> I don't know how to ride the horse! Huh? 16 hours straight. 53 minutes, 16. Oh, 53 hours, 16. Wait, 16 hours, 53 minutes, 16 seconds, 3 milliseconds. Straight. Straight. Running. I feel like I am soaked. We did it, you guys! We have to watch the cutscene.
I think that's what you're supposed to do when you do when you complete a run. I am not sitting down. I am not sitting down. Guys, we did it. Should I sell for celebration? My carpet and me are one. It's like the Gatorade pour. <laughs> it's really cold. <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>